Monocle magazine has just published its annual quality of life survey. In one of its key findings, while well, Munich was named the most livable city with Berlin, Hamburg and Dusseldorf also making the ranking. Well, joining us now from Zurich is Tyler Brule. He's Monocle editor in chief. Um, Tyler, always a pleasure to have you on Bloomberg surveillance because you look at things a little bit differently to everyone else. I mean, London's nowhere to be seen. Is it a Brexit effect? Talk to us a little bit about how you measure uh, whether a city is pleasant to live in or not. Well, this is, and good morning, Francine. Good morning, Tom. This is, uh, it's 12 years now that we've been doing this survey. And you're right, we, we don't just look at sort of the, the key factors of, yeah, spending power uh, and, and house prices. That is one component of probably 60 different metrics. Um, but we also look at, at important things like hours of sunshine and, of course, global connectivity. Um, and also, you know, how, you know, really how affable is a city mm -hmm. when, it, when it comes to, of course, attracting new business. And Germany did very, very well um, across all of the cities mentioned. Yeah. Tyler, one of the great things we're seeing in America with your international survey is where Amazon is going to plant their second city. And what I find fascinating is how Amazon is catching up with Tyler Brule and that it's really about quality of life and the power of young people. I mean, you know, whatever you want to call them, young people have real power, corporate power in these decisions, don't they? Absolutely. And that was, you know, a really a considerable component of this. It's, as you've said, Tom, it's not just about, uh, of course, are you going to get incentives to bring your startup to that city? Uh, but what is the education uh, system like? You know, is there a good expat community? Yeah. Um, at the same time, you know, in a city like Zurich or Munich, can you can you jump in the lake uh, or the river uh, at lunchtime and after work and also have a, a drink on the street uh, without getting arrested? Where's London on this? They're not on your map. What happened to London? You got to be kidding me, Tyler. Come on, London. What's wrong with London? <laughs> well, <laughs> London has, has, has a few challenges. Francine and I have done a couple of workshops on this uh, from, from time to time. Uh, there's a lot going on, but just, I think, leading into this, you know, Brexit plays into this. Uh, London has never done really that well uh, over the years with us anyway. But, I mean, you know, we talked about this last time. There is a, a, a talent movement right now. You see people going to... Amsterdam, Berlin, uh, you know, to be able to say that after work you want to go for a surf in Lisbon. Uh, and this is what, of course, is driving right. a lot of back offices, a lot of hedge funds, uh, and many other businesses to, to, yeah. to look elsewhere uh, across Europe.